Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Ask Me Anything where you ask me your questions and I find you the answers and today we are joined by Dr. Tracy Weisberg, our first official medical correspondent uh, here on Alive and she comes from the New England Cancer Specialist in the state of Maine where I took really a, a very large portion of my treatment. Uh, and she is one of my fantastic oncologists. Uh, and today we're going to talk about some of the um, some of the side effects, the lingering side effects of cancer treatment, because we have received so many questions from all of you on this topic. So I'm going to start. Hi, Tracy. Excuse me, Dr. Hi. Weisberg. I should call you Dr. Weisberg. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, you don't have to, Joan. That's great. Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm terrific. I went to my second three-month check up today down here in uh, Connecticut and my hemoglobin is back up, my white blood cells back up, everything looks normal, my cancer markers look normal, so we're A-OK -okay here today. That's a great place to be on your one year survivorship victorship visit. Absolutely. So I'm connecting with so many women. Let me, um, my first one question comes from Clara Two. She says, I had breast cancer, I have finished my chemo, my radiation, and I am on a five-year drug program. How can I deal with the weakness or especially the bone pain? So I think that what she's telling us is that she had an estrogen-driven tumor, that her biomarker was estrogen positive, and that she's completed treatment and now she's on some type of um, what is broadly referred to as endocrine therapy. And um, there's several different kinds of endocrine therapy, but tamoxifen is one of those drugs, as is um, a, a, a group of drugs called aromatase inhibitors. Um, and one that's used quite frequently is anastrozole. And um, one of the common side effects of endocrine therapy is that women can have some mild fatigue, um, but especially on the aromatase inhibitors, one of the major issues with them is that um, women can get muscle um, aches and joint pain. And the reason why this happens is not entirely clear, but I think that it probably has to do with the level of lowering their estrogen. And some women are just more sensitive to it than others. Um, I have had patients, though, who get similar side effects from their radiation. Uh, the radiation oncologists, um, they, they usually say, no, no, you can't get achy joints from radiation. But I have had a number of women who, before they even go on their um, endocrine therapy, are having achy joints. And um, so if they're, if they're in close proximity to their radiation, maybe it's, it's from the radiation. Mm -hmm. I, usually, I try to give women a few weeks um, to heal after radiation before starting these endocrine therapies just so they can um, really evaluate the side effects and where they're coming from. And then another reason for the achy joints, if she had been taking hormone replacement therapy before her breast cancer diagnosis, that, that would mask achy joints. And, and so when you take the hormone replacement therapy away, sadly, you know, you feel like, um, you know, a woman that's gone through menopause and one of the common natural side effects of menopause is a little bit of achy joints. Wow. So I give a few reasons for that. You just like, well, that was an eye opener what you just said for me because as you know I was on HRT um, and I questioned it year after year after year but there was always this sense that I didn't have a family history of breast cancer but I did have a family history of right. cardiac therefore you know there's some protection of your heart although now they're saying don't take HRT to protect your heart. But I stopped all that HRT. I was on the bioidenticals, right. progesterone, testosterone, DHAA, all that stuff. And now I'm not on it because I stopped at the day I had my breast cancer diagnosis and there's no way I would go back on it. But I'm experiencing a lot of what you're talking about, the achy, the 
lethargic, the and all of that, and that obviously could answer, and the hot flashes, by the way, that go along with it. Right. That's right. all because I'm not on HRT anymore. That that could be a reason, um, but for women who've taken chemotherapy, um, some chemotherapies also can contribute to achy joints and um, and feeling like your fingers are a little bit numb or sensitive. Um, and that's called neuropathy. And a lot of women struggle with that for months to years after their treatment. So there's a lot of reasons for having these achy joints. And I think the hardest thing for women is that they, they also know that their breast cancer, one of those places that breast cancer likes to come back, if it's going to come back, is in bones. And so having these achy joints is incredibly alarming. Um, and, and, and once you understand what your new normal is with your joints, then what you really would be looking for is a change in that, or if a, if a different bone was hurting or ribs were hurting, um, achy joints is probably a low estrogen state and a consequence of, of menopause. Yeah. And, and we also had one woman that came in and gave a response to, um, to uh, that post, and it comes from Marsha Ten. She said, I'm so sorry to hear about your diagnosis, but the arthritis symptoms could even be caused by medication. I had a little bit of arthritis before, but Famara, 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 yeah. It made me feel like I had arthritis times a hundred. I kept taking it, and then after a couple of months, the symptoms after a while disappeared. But you should talk to your doctor about your symptoms. So Famara, and the um, the generic name is Letrozole, is one of those aromatase inhibitors that is an wow. endocrine therapy, and and the aromatase inhibitors. There's three of them: um, Anastrozole, which is Arimidex. Letrozole, which is Femera, and Eximestane, which is Aromacin. So those three medicines, their major side effect is achy joints, achy muscles. And if you, if you get that from an aromatase inhibitor, theoretically, it's going to happen on any one of those drugs. Um, but I have switched women from one to another and they tolerate one or another better. And it seems to make very little rhyme or reason. Um, tamoxifen is not an aromatase inhibitor. It's a different class of anti-estrogen treatment. And a lot of times, um, if I switch women over to tamoxifen, then their joint aches are a little bit better. So you, you really, you have to kind of try the one that's gonna work the best. All right, all great advice. Uh, doctor, our next question comes from Jeanette Ten, and she's having some issues with her Metaport. Um, that I remember, I got my port literally the day before you right. started my treatment with you. Um, she says, "Hi, Joan. My name is Jeanette. I'm a 42-year-old single parent of three children at home, and on the 26th of June, I was diagnosed with IDC TNBC stage two." I just got the Metaport placed yesterday, so I'm still very sore. I did the Echo pre-port placement. Um, my PET scan is today, and I'm hoping for good news that it's all contained. But what can I do to help with the soreness? So um, do, you, do you think she's asking about soreness around the Metaport? I think so. But isn't okay. there some concern that she should be very diligent about keeping an eye on that? Because I've had other women write to me and tell me that um, they couldn't, that they had problems with their metaport, that they started feeling soreness that reached out around it, and in fact, that was an infection. Right, right. So obviously, yes, this is a, um, it's a, a medical device that is inserted um, under sterile conditions. Either a surgeon puts it in, or now nowadays, frequently radiologists, interventional radiologists place it. It's um, all in, it's all covered with skin. There's nothing hanging out. Um, but the procedure itself is, is a little bit traumatic to the tissues. And some women can get some bruising 
Um, maybe you don't even see it on the skin, but the muscles and the blood vessel can be a little traumatized from the, from the procedure. Um, so that's one reason she might be having some pain. Um, if there's little stitches or sutures in there, sometimes people can, you know, react to that and get a little bit of redness around them and, and have a reaction. Um, the tape that goes over the Mediport initially, um, you know, frequently women who are diagnosed with breast cancer haven't had other medical issues or any kind of procedures, so they wouldn't know if they're, if they're allergic to the adhesive tape that we usually use, so that's another possibility. But as you point out, the most um, worrisome possibility is that because it's a foreign body in us that, um, that it could get infected. And if it, if it continues to hurt or if the skin gets red, or if the arm gets swollen, the arm on the side of the Mediport, um, these are maybe all um, concerns that it could be infected or that some, um, you know, coagulated blood is there causing, causing some pain. And so if, if it persists beyond a day or so, um, probably have your nurse or um, physician check it out, make sure it's okay. Now, I will say that um, I had the first few infusions in my arm, and I'm like, as you know, as you know all so well, a like little bit of a needle weenie, and that to me was so traumatic, just having them like having to poke me a few times to get in and find a, a vein, so then I went and got the port, and at first I was a little reluctant to get the port because, you know, it is a surgical procedure, right. but it was so nothing, and, and once again, um, they told me I would be under conscious sedation. So I told them that the part of that I didn't like the sound of was the conscious part. Mm -hmm. However, they said, don't worry, you'll be aware of what's going on, but you won't care what's going on. And they were so right. It was really not a big procedure. I, it, it just was so nothing. And yet once I got my port in, and let me just say to all the women out there watching, I'm, I will show you right here. I mean, if you can see right there, you can hardly see the, you know, the little, what's the remnants of having that port in. And the idea of like, oh, gee, what's my, what is my, uh, it, my chest going to look like after, after cancer? Will I be able to wear my low cut dresses? And I know that some people have them put the ports in all kinds of weird places so you can negate that possibility. But I got to tell you, this was convenient. It made the rest of my infusions so much easier. And I'm still a little sore there. Like I had a massage the other day and she went over and I said, ooh, 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 I'm still tender. And it's been months since I had it removed, but that's okay. She said, if I just, you know, rub it a little bit each time I see you, that will help that little bit of a hardening at the top go away. And right. I gotta tell you, I mean, I'll wear it as a badge of courage. I don't really care. <laughs> I'd much, much rather be sitting here without cancer and having had the next few months of chemotherapy be much easier. Absolutely. So, yeah. But you raised some really, um, really great points. Hopefully, um, in this day and age, you know, anyone who puts a Mediport into a patient, uh, especially women, would um, at least engage them in the placement of the port. And, um, you know, you're a great example. Look, you can wear that nice rounded neck yeah. and there's nothing showing. But, um, but if, if, the, if the radiologist or the surgeon does not engage you, I think, you know, be proactive and say, look, you know, I have these clothes. I like to wear this. I want to make sure that this little incision is not going to, you know, be right up here where I'm going to want to wear you know, nice things after I'm done with breast cancer. All right. So everyone, I hope that these answers help you with, you know, just having a better understanding of uh, some of the side effects that can occur because of chemo, because of medications that we get during the treatment of breast cancer, and even with the uh, insertion and then later the removal of your port. Doctor, thank you so much. You're welcome, Joan.